It's the year 1995, and the United States is seeing rapid openings and expansions of shopping malls all around the country. Malls like Oak Hollow and Meadowwood are seeing healthy attendance numbers and reliable tenants. Olathe, a city suburb 25 miles away from Kansas City, wants in on the action and approves the construction of the Great Mall of the Great Plains by a joint venture between Glimshire Realty Trust and Jordan Robert Perlmutter & Co. The building site was right off Interstate 35, across from the Olathe Medical Center, and shortly after the announcement began the construction of several restaurants and hotels in anticipation for the dramatic increase of shoppers. Unlike the nearby Oak Park Mall, which was only 10 miles to the northeast, the Great Mall intended on featuring a mix of value-oriented discount stores and designer brands to avoid direct competition. The Great Mall was designed as a single-floor building and could hold over 150 stores and 10 anchor stores with a combined area of 814,000 square feet, making it the largest outlet mall in all of Kansas. Construction began in 1996 and was intended to open in March of 1997, but was delayed due to leasing disputes with several tenants. On August 14, 1997, the mall opened with a total of 10 anchor stores. These stores included Burlington Coat Factory, Dillard's, DSW, Eddie Bauer, Group USA, Jeepers, Linens and Things, Marshalls, Old Navy, and Oshman Sports. Outside of the anchor stores was also a 16-screen Dickinson Theaters. On opening day, the parking lot was filled with over 70,000 curious shoppers, news vans, and motor coaches eager to view the newest and largest shopping mall in all of Kansas. With strong attendance and all of the mall's retail space occupied, things were looking up for the Great Mall of the Great Plains. During the construction, a northwest corridor was left with a dead end in anticipation for a planned future expansion that would increase the mall's total square footage to over a million. An expansion to the massive building was incredibly ambitious and almost promising from the looks of the mall's first few years of operation. But in 2001, Dillard suddenly ended their contract and left their space vacant until VF Outlet opened three months later. Then almost a year after that, Oshman Sports, Linens and & Things, and Saks Fifth Avenue, who opened as the 11th anchor store in 1999, also vacated their spots. In 2005, Marshalls moved their store to an outdoor strip center, letting clothing retailers Steve & Barry's take over their spot. At some point between 2005 and 2007, Old Navy relocated along the 119th Street strip center due to falling attendance of the Great Mall. Despite this, in the same year, famous labels opened up in the former spot where Saks Fifth Avenue was, only to close two years later in 2009, along with VF Outlet. By the end of 2008, Stephen Barry's had declared bankruptcy and began liquidating all of their stores, including the one at the Great Mall. In an effort to help increase foot traffic, the Kansas Drivers License Bureau opened a location in the center of the mall, although these efforts proved to be futile. Because on January 6, 2009, Glimshire Realty Trust sold the mall to the Van Tile Group. The sudden sale and the recent economic downturn of the United States at the time started rumors in the community about the future of the Great Mall of the Great Plains. In September of 2010, the city of Olathe approved a sales tax increase of one and a half cents that only applied to sales in the mall in hopes of raising capital to improve the conditions of the mall. Come January 1st, anything you buy inside the mall will cost you 10.1 cents in sales tax. This showed how dire the situation was, as it was the first time the city of Olathe approved a community improvement district sales tax levy. By this point, only 63% of the mall was occupied. A few more years passed, with the sales tax increase only being used to cover maintenance costs. One by one, tenants let their contracts expire, leaving behind one more barren store and fueling the beliefs that the Van Tile Group was one step closer to locking up the mall for good. I distinctly remember basing high school English assignments on whether there was any hope for saving the mall or what the building could be repurposed into. To me and many of my classmates, the most ominous sign of the mall's declining state was how out of date it had become. Right as you were about to walk into the northern corridor, there was a large sign hanging above listing what stores were down there. On top of the sign was a graphic of what seemed to be a Nokia 6110 cell phone that has been there since the very day it was hung up in 1997. On February 16th, 2015, the mall had made the announcement that surprised no one. After we learned the Great Mall of the Great Plains will close this year. By the third quarter of 2015, the Great Mall of the Great Plains would be shuttering its doors, and on April 30th, the remaining tenants were given a 60-day notice to vacate. By July, less than seven stores were still open, including Burlington Coat Factory, the Driver's License Bureau, and the movie theaters, which had since been renamed B&B Theaters, with the latter two closing up two months later. 
The mall's final day of business was on September 18, 2015, when all entrances to the interior were locked and the only store still open was Burlington Co. Factory, which had a direct entrance from the outside. For almost a year, the building sat empty with no news on what was going to happen with the over three-quarter million square foot property until July 11, 2016, when demolition crews began tearing down the massive complex, leaving only Burlington and parts of the parking lot still intact. I'm unsure as to what the building looked like on the interior when demolition began, and I've heard a few accounts of local urban explorers making their way inside, but I've not seen any footage and can't believe they got too far inside as the building was still secured with cameras and motion sensors even after closing down. The closure of the mall did not come as a shock to the community. For some, the writing was on the walls as early as 1999 when Business Journal published an article compiling several accounts of previous tenants who were promised large numbers of customers, but only saw a tenth of the traffic their other locations were getting. Many believed the mall's combination of value and designer merchandise appealed to too broad of a market already occupied by existing malls such as the Oak Park, Bannister, and Metcalf South. To top it all off, expectations were high on future development of the southern portion of Olathe. Between 1980 and 1995, Olathe had seen explosive residential development in the southern farmlands. This continued until right after the turn of the millennium, when the growth shifted towards eastern Olathe and neighboring Overland Park. To this day, most of the land near the grounds of the Great Mall of the Great Plains is zoned for either industrial, commercial, or agricultural use. Today, the only thing that remains is a single building that holds a Burlington Co. factory, now known as just Burlington, in a large empty field surrounded by other vacant or nearly vacant buildings. In January of 2018, a short announcement was made for the redevelopment of the land into a mixed-use, multi-purpose lot, including apartment complexes, offices, and even an arena. But until then, every time someone drives past 151st Street near Interstate 35, They'll be at the site of what used to be the largest mall in all of Kansas.